Hi, and thanks for joining us at ARM Dev Summit 2021. Simon told you all about what ARM technology is doing around the world, and it's impressive. When I imagine the 200 billion chips our partners have shipped and over 2,000 ARM licenses, I am humbled. ARM really is everywhere. In fact, we believe that 100% of shared data will soon be processed securely on ARM-based systems at the endpoint, in the network, or in the cloud. Yeah, that says 100%. My talk is about designing with systems in mind. I'm going to start by talking about robots. Why? Well, because robots are a great example of how systems evolve. It wasn't that long ago that they were complete science fiction. In fact, it was Isaac Asimov who first introduced the three laws of robotics in his 1942 short story, Runaround. His three laws defined a set of high-level rules that a robotic system would always have to follow. Asimov's laws were a great start, but they weren't perfect. There was no way that he could predict the complexity of the world that robots would be born into. Fast forward 70 years, and the laws were updated. The new version is based on an evolved view of the system requirements. We know now that a robotic system might have to diagnose illness or give out financial advice. We know that it's important for humans to be able to tell a machine from a person. Robotic systems will keep evolving. As things like AI ethics, standardized security, expectations and capabilities advance. You see, my point here is that systems in our world often begin with a high-level vision. And just like Asimov's laws did in 1942, it might, at first, feel like science fiction. Then as the world works together to make the vision a reality, gain experience, and better understand requirements, the system evolves. The ARM ecosystem really understands that journey. Over the last 30 years, we have learned so much about how a systems approach can be transformational. I'm going to take you through some of our experiences. I'll start in mobile and how that knowledge is helping us to redefine what's possible in the cloud. And when I say helping us, I mean helping ARM and our partners. Systems are all about collaboration. Then I'll turn my attention to the IoT and how ARM Total Solutions, we announced that yesterday, will simplify the development process and enable all of us, the entire ecosystem, to design with systems in mind. We believe that this has the potential to 10x the IoT. This is how we think about a system. A foundation built using ARM technology with multiple layers transforming the foundation with incredible innovation. At the top is an enormous set of applications and services brought to life by millions of developers, including thousands of you watching today. There are three main phases every system goes through as it becomes reality. First, define. We work with our ecosystem to help define key system attributes. We must understand the relationship between technologies so that every piece can be optimized to support the final product. And we must jointly establish standards to protect against scale-killing fragmentation. Next, the solution is designed. This brings together common software and IP into segment-specific optimized platforms, subsystems. These designs are a launch pad for our partners' innovation. Finally, development. Development is where the magic happens. ARM technology is morphed into a 5G base station, an autonomous car, or a VR headset. Our partners do the development, but it's up to us to ensure that they have the right tools to get to market quickly, efficiently, and securely. Let's look at mobile. It's a great place to start. The thing about mobile is that evolution is constant. There is a never-ending drive for ever greater performance, ever greater efficiency, and ever greater capability. And while there is a single starting point, the ARM architecture, there's a vast army of partners pulling together and often competing at the same time. The result is ARM technology being baked into a host of specialized devices with amazing product-specific features. Within mobile, there is huge choice and unrivaled diversity of performance and ultra-fast time to market. Memory tagging extension is a great example of how we're working with partners to define new features for mobile systems. We co-developed MTE with Google to significantly improve security for Android developers. And because we're working together and taking a system-level approach, 
The software will be ready ahead of new ARMv9 based chips rolling out at the end of this year. But MTE is only one example of the long list of features we have co-developed for mobile as a result of designing the systems in mind. Mobile systems will continue to evolve and demand ever-increasing performance. It's why we believe that the future of mobile will be defined by ARM's Total Compute strategy. Total Compute takes the co-design of hardware and software to new levels. It uses a system-level approach to meet ecosystem demands for ever-greater capability and significant generation-to-generation -generation performance improvement. And what we've learned in mobile, we are now applying to infrastructure. We believe that ARM processors are coming to servers in a big way. And we believe that ARM is actually going to be everywhere from the edge to the cloud. We started our work in infrastructure over a decade ago. A lot of people thought it was science fiction to think that ARM could make inroads into the cloud. But as we learned more about the challenges facing infrastructure systems, we found that they were ripe for change. Our first move was to work with infrastructure partners across the ecosystem to understand and define what all aspects of the end systems would look like. This included everything from per core CPU performance and support for much higher core counts to how software would be developed and deployed for ARM-based systems. We also needed to make sure our partners could easily add their own IP so that they could build all those amazing products. That's how Neoverse was born. And it's why our Neoverse cores work so well with system IP, like our core mesh network interconnects. It's also why we worked alongside the ecosystem to make sure there was support for vital OSs like Linux and Windows, and support for hypervisors like Xen and KVM and VMware. And let's not forget about Kubernetes and Docker. But there was still more to do. So to validate our understanding and help our partners deliver optimized systems, we built reference designs with hardware and software for use cases like smart NICs, servers, and 5G base stations. And to ensure all that software lands seamlessly on ARM, we also worked with key partners across the ecosystem to introduce server-ready, a framework which defines key aspects of the underlying platform so that the ecosystem can achieve software leverage. Server-ready has now expanded into system-ready, with specifications for diverse edge and endpoint devices that are looking to run a rich OS or support multi-tenancy. ARM is also seeing direct benefit from servers based on our technology. Every day, we run millions of processor simulation jobs on AWS's Neoverse-based Graviton2 servers. It's enabling us to verify designs 32% faster, realize 36% cost savings, and cut our energy consumption in half, significantly reducing our carbon footprint. Our efforts have clearly been worth it. But establishing ARM in the cloud hasn't been easy. It was met with a lot of resistance. There is literally no way we could have succeeded without a deep understanding of the end-to-end -end system and working to redefine it. That was a direct result of the deepest collaboration with our partners. Our work with the ecosystem in both infrastructure and mobile has taught us a lot. And we believe that we can leverage what we have learned, specifically designing with systems in mind, to unlock the potential of the IoT. You see, the time is right for the ecosystem to fuel a new IoT economy. It needs to rival the shape, speed, and size of the smartphone industry's app economy. It's time to 10x the IoT. Our ecosystem has moved past the days where we struggle to add compute to everyday devices or figure out how to connect them. Thanks to the work we have done together over the years, today's systems address those challenges. We are evolving. The focus for systems is on bringing intelligence from the tiniest sensor all the way to the largest cloud data center, both securely and sustainably. It is intelligence that will enable IoT to accelerate human productivity, boost economic growth, and generate the impact needed to help solve some of the world's toughest problems. A great example is the important work that Topher White and his group Rainforest Connection are doing in Indonesia. The Indonesian rainforest is a sink for global carbon emissions, but it's under threat from illegal logging. Rainforest Connection is fighting back. They are using AI-based IoT systems to listen for the sound of chainsaws and heavy vehicles. It's helping rangers to confront the criminals while they're still in the act. You see, we want to make it far easier for organizations like Rainforest Connection to generate that type of impact. But if we are really going to help, we need to be honest about how hard it is to build IoT systems today. So many pieces must come together.
There's embedded software, cloud services, hardware design, connectivity, application development, machine learning, security, the list goes on and on. These systems are complex and massively fragmented. If we're going to 10X the IoT, we need to design with systems in mind and actively address each of the three key phases to building and scaling any system. Define, design, and develop. Let's start with Define. ARM is focused on enabling software leverage across the ecosystem with initiatives like Project Cassini, and we have seen tremendous progress. Project Cassini includes system-ready specifications, Parsec open source security software, and cloud-native reference implementations. It defines how partners can ensure a cloud-native software experience across a diverse and secure edge ecosystem with Cortex A-based devices. Project Cassini has been incredibly well-received, and many of you are already engaged. We now have over 70 participants from all over the ecosystem, including silicon designers, board manufacturers, software vendors, and OEMs, like Honeywell, ABB, and Johnson Controls, some of the largest names in IoT. In fact, Project Cassini is showing such benefit to the ecosystem, we have kicked off a related initiative, Project Centauri. Project Centauri is focused on driving rapid, exponential IoT growth for Cortex-M-based devices. By bringing together foundational standards, security initiatives, and our extensive software ecosystem, Project Centauri will do for M-Class systems what Project Cassini is doing for A-Class, create software leverage. It means working with partners to embrace the most popular software stacks, finding how new features are accessed, and streamlining how software is packaged and delivered, regardless of which IoT service, operating system, or hardware an OEM might choose. Let's move to design. Our partners shipped over 25 billion chips last year, and deployments are accelerating. One reason is the need for highly capable endpoint AI. It's all about intelligence. It's why we've seen such amazing demand for our new Cortex M55 and Ethos U55 combination. But a system is not just about a CPU or NPU. That's why we are doubling down on ARM Core Stone. By bringing together CPU, NPU, and system IPs into an integrated and verified subsystem, ARM CoreStone creates the perfect starting point for SOC design. Our silicon partners love CoreStone, and we hear them loud and clear. Y you see, the data tells the story. In the last three years, over 150 designs have used CoreStone to accelerate time to market. This includes nearly 70% of our M55 licenses. Aleph Semiconductor is one of those licensees and first to sample actual silicon, leveraging the M55-U55 pair for IoT. Working with them, we were able to measure actual performance. The data we're seeing is outstanding. We expected a 500x uplift in ML performance over previous M-Class systems, but using ARM CoreStone as the starting point for their design, Elif was able to achieve an 800x improvement. Fast time to market and incredible performance. Moving forward, we will make ARM CoreStone foundational to what we deliver to the ecosystem. It will be laser focused on accelerating and optimizing the design process for our silicon partners. With ARM CoreStone as the foundation and working with the ecosystem to add end-to-end -end tool support, robust RTOS enablement, and application-specific reference code, I'm so excited about ARM Total Solutions for IoT. We launched it yesterday, and it's going to have an immediate impact. Total Solutions for IoT brings together hardware and software to offer use case specific solutions, giving you everything you need to simplify your design process and streamline product development. It's the basis for a complete solution. It starts with CoreStone as the foundation, but then adds things like real time OS support, over the air update capability, security, optimized ML, development tools, and application specific reference code. It's ready for you to develop great products and services with. But Total Solutions is even bigger than that. We need to do even more to accelerate time to market for all of our IoT partners, including software developers, service providers, and OEMs. That is why, as an extension of Total Solutions for IoT, we're also launching ARM Virtual Hardware Targets. ARM Virtual Hardware leverages our extensive modeling technology to deliver virtual replicas of the underlying, integrated, and verified CoreStone subsystem. We are going to make ARM virtual hardware broadly available and cloud accessible to OEMs, software developers, and the entire ecosystem. But here's what's so great about virtual hardware. It 
it massively simplifies embedded software development. The focus can shift away from building boards and configuring wires and jumpers and move to developing great products and services. The same way development happens in other markets, the same way apps are written for smartphones and cloud-native software is written for a data center. And because of the scalability of the cloud, embedded developers can adopt more modern and agile development methodologies, like continuous integration, continuous delivery, CICD, without having to build and maintain hardware farms. And all UML developers, you don't have to become embedded developers or worry about investing in a new hardware infrastructure to run your ML DevOps flow and take advantage of all the IoT and endpoint devices based on ARM. This is a game changer and alone could 10x the Internet of Things. It turns out some of our most sophisticated IoT partners are already using ARM virtual hardware to develop better systems and accelerate their time to market. One great example is Amazon's Lab 126, who are using ARM virtual hardware to scale their Alexa wake word regression testing. By removing physical hardware dependencies, they can accelerate updates, use cloud based CI CD, and support lots of different Alexa enabled devices. Another example is HiMax. They've been using ARM Total Solutions to speed up the development of a new AI processor. This includes using the underlying CoreStone subsystem and working with virtual hardware to accelerate their internal software development. But HiMax is taking it a step further. Working with us, they are making the virtual hardware config that matches their new processor widely available, well ahead of silicon availability. Developers can get going right away without having to wait for HiMax chips or boards. These are both great examples of the impact ARM virtual hardware is already having, but they are not the only ones. Machine learning has the potential to bring artificial intelligence to billions of devices at the edge. Amazon SageMaker is a cloud service that makes it easy for ML developers to build, train, and deploy models at scale. Our customers want to accelerate the pace at which they build new types of models and new types of hardware. Using ARM virtual hardware inside an Amazon machine image, the SageMaker Edge team helped our customers develop custom models for their unique devices faster than ever before. We were able to simulate our customers' computer vision and speech recognition workloads, simplify the model optimization tool chain, for their device hardware and help our customers develop new models for new processors even before they became available in silicon. We're excited to work with ARM to make it easier for our customers to accelerate the development of machine learning for IoT. Hi, I'm Paul Beckman from DSP Concepts. Our core technology, AudioWeaver, is a framework that enables software developers to develop embedded audio and IoT applications which provide amazing crafted audio experiences. We have seen our technology move from running exclusively on DSPs to now over 80% of applications are on ARM-based processors. This is because of increased performance, integration, and ease of development. And so we are keen to port to the new ARM Cortex-M55 and Ethos U55 processors. We're also adding ML support beyond just core audio features. Normally, we have to wait for silicon availability, but ARM virtual hardware has allowed us to start porting and optimization and avoid the difficulties of developing on early hardware. This technology from ARM will speed up time to product for our developers and time to experience for their users. I'm Pete Warden, tech lead for TensorFlow Mobile at Google. We have been working with ARM to add support to TensorFlow for the new Cortex M55 CPU and Ethos U55 NPU. Thanks to ARM virtual hardware, we've been able to develop and test the library well ahead of silicon availability, as well as providing feedback directly to the software teams at ARM. TensorFlow already fully supports the new ARM CPU and NPU, and our cloud continuous integration system makes sure that any code changes are tested against it. IoT developers are able to write software and take advantage of the optimizations in TensorFlow much earlier in product design and dramatically accelerate how fast they can get to market. ARM virtual hardware targets are a critical component to enable IoT developers to adopt modern software practices, such as continuous integration and cloud-native development.
By making virtual hardware available as part of ARM Total Solutions at the same time the underlying Corestone subsystem is ready, the whole ecosystem, including OEMs and service providers, can start to develop software and optimize roadmaps for new systems long before silicon is available. For our silicon partners, it means stronger demand for chips before they've even taped out. And for software developers and OEMs, it means being able to easily develop and test code on the latest IP without waiting for silicon. The technology, tooling, and software we're bringing together and the system level approach it represents has been proven by some of our leading partners and we are going to democratize it for everyone. We're fully committing to this total solutions approach and our roadmap over the coming months and years. The first configurations of ARM Total Solutions for IoT are available today. They are built around the ARM Corestone 300 subsystem that features our Cortex-M55 and Ethos U55 processors, which we know perform so well. On the hardware side, the IP is available through ARM Flexible Access. And on the software side, you can freely access the complete Total Solutions software development kits on ARM's GitHub. Of course, you can run those SDKs and the software you develop on the first beta release of virtual hardware, available as an Amazon machine image on the AWS marketplace. This combination of the ARM virtual hardware AMI and the Total Solutions SDK is already integrated with some of the most popular CI CD workflows like GitHub Runner. ARM virtual hardware will be available at no cost while in beta. And to give early users a head start, we have partnered with AWS to offset some of the infrastructure fees. Check it out at arm.com. We believe this is the beginning of a new era for IoT, one of two hardware software co system co-design, one that takes years off of product design cycles, and one that empowers everyone to spend less time integrating and more time building great products and services. We believe this is the foundation of the new IoT economy. From the smartphone to the data center and now to IoT, designing with systems in mind is the key to accelerating innovation and getting the best out of the specialized processing capabilities that the ARM ecosystem is delivering, wherever computing happens. I really appreciate your time today. For more detail, check out some of the Dev Summit technical sessions and learn more about the Total Solutions launch in our newsroom at arm.com. Thank you.